Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another episode of Model Railway Basics. So far we've made the baseboard, laid the track, and in the previous episode we even had a look at how to do the wiring. But today we get to start work on the scenery. Now, so far we've wanted our baseboard to be as flat as possible for the sake of the track, but that's all about to change. If we look at the world around us, it's very rarely completely flat, and so as a result today I'll be showing you how to add some hills and landscaping to your layout. As always, there are lots of different ways to do this, and my way of doing it is just one of many. So please don't feel like you have to stick rigidly to what I'm doing. Feel free to make it your own, adapt it for your own uses, bring in other techniques that you like the look of. So yeah, don't feel like you have to stick to what I'm doing and follow it step by step. With that said though, let's have a look at the technique I use to add landscapes to my layout. So here's our demonstration board again, but it's looking a bit flat. So let's add some small hills and do some landscaping. One of the most popular ways to do this is using polystyrene blocks, which is the technique I'll be showing you today. It seems that everything comes packaged with a layer of polystyrene these days, so it's a good idea anytime you have something delivered to check for large blocks like this, which you can reuse to create the landscape on your layout. That said, you will need to cut some of it down, so make sure you have a knife or a small saw like this one on hand. And be aware that when you cut the polystyrene, the little bits will go flying everywhere, so have the hoover on standby for afterwards as well. Another option, of course, is to use a hot wire tool to cut the polystyrene, which reduces on the cleanup, of course, but if you're a beginner, you're not likely to have one of those just lying around. And don't forget, there are other ways of creating hills too. In the past, I've used chicken wire if I've needed to do large areas quickly, or some people prefer to use cardboard to create formers and then strips of it to make a lattice. There are multiple techniques, so remember this is just one way of doing it. The polystyrene is in roughly the right place now, but the blocks are a bit, well, blocky. So to make them look a bit more natural, we'll cut at an angle to make it slope downwards towards the track. Now this is where you get to be really creative. You can have little ridges or dips, but it is best to come up with some sort of a plan before you start making any drastic changes. Don't worry about getting a perfect finish yet either. This just has to be a very rough sense of how you want your landscape to rise and fall, and we'll finish it off all neatly later on. You can also use smaller chunks of polystyrene to fill in any gaps if your blocks are a bit of an odd shape like mine are. Now it's okay to take it slow when carving as well. Remember, you can always take more off later, but putting it back on again isn't so easy, so go slow here. When you have all the polystyrene in place and you've cut it to the shape you're happy with, it's time to stick it down. In the past, I tried to use PVA to do this, but it took ages to dry and it didn't stick very well either. Instead, I recommend you try using a spray glue or super glue like I'm using here. Starting with the bigger blocks first, spread some of the glue over the underside. And then turn it over and place it on the board, making sure you've got the position right. It's a good idea to use some weights to hold it down while the glue dries. Depending on the type of glue you're using, it may only take a few minutes to set and then you can move on to the next piece. Gradually work your way around all the large blocks on the board until you come to the smaller pieces. For these, it's exactly the same process, just using smaller amounts of glue. You may need to build some areas up by using multiple chunks, but as you can see, the polystyrene has no problem sticking to itself. Something to think about, depending on the type of glue you're using, you probably want to do this in a well-ventilated area, especially if you're using spray glue. With the polystyrene blocks stuck fast to our baseboard, let's now cover them in mod rock, also known as plaster bandage. Inside this packet is a roll of the bandage, and if I unravel it a bit, you can see that it's infused with plaster. The easiest way to lay this is to cut the bandage into lots of strips. You don't need to be too precise, it just makes it more manageable to handle when we start putting it on the layout. You'll probably also need more than you think you do, even for just a small area like this, but we can always come back and cut more later. With the plaster bandage cut into strips, take a single strip and dip it into a bowl of water. 
Once it's soaked through, you can then transfer it from the bowl to the baseboard and lay it on the top of the polystyrene. And then simply repeat this process until you've covered all of the polystyrene. You can also use this on chicken wire or a cardboard lattice too, although in my experience you may need to put down a second layer of the plaster bandage after the first lot has dried. Another option of course is to use paper mache instead. It's a bit more flimsy, but it does save having to buy the rolls of plaster bandage, so this might be a good option if your layout is permanently set up in a spare room or the loft. Anyway, when the mod rock dries, which doesn't take long at all, it'll give us a nice hard surface to put our scenics on later. You might notice there are gaps in the bandage, so one way to get rid of these is to use a finger to smooth out the wet plaster. As you can see, it does take a bit of time to put all of the mod rock down, so I'd suggest doing it in small areas at a time. Once it dries though, you can see we now have a nice hard surface. In some areas though, you might want a bit more control over exactly how the land lies. So for that, let's try some modeling compound, also known as Sculptor Mold. This is sort of like a lumpy powder that you can buy bags of, and when you add water to it, it turns into a sort of sludge. Using our hands, we'll add small amounts of the modelling compound to the layout and do some good old-fashioned messy modelling. Using your fingers, you can manipulate it to smooth out gradients or fill in gaps, and this will help you achieve a more natural flow to the landscape. Another option, of course, is to use clay, although I've found that the modelling compound actually dries a lot more quickly, so you can get around to painting it much sooner. Now one area where I especially like to use modelling compound is to use it to build up the land around things that I know have to be a certain height. For example, here at the edge of my baseboard I have an end plate which shows the profile the land needs to have. The polystyrene has built up the majority of the height, but I can now go in and fine tune this with the modelling compound to make sure there's no harsh drop offs. Also, as the modelling compound starts to dry, you can wet a finger and use this to smooth out the surface, so if there's any areas that look particularly rough or bumpy, you can get a nice finish on them. As you can see, everything is pretty much dry now, so later on we'll get round to adding scenery to this. Hopefully though, you now have an idea of how to build up the landscape on your layout. In the meantime though, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon too to get notifications when the next episode is released. For now though, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!